Welcome back everybody, main fly guys here with another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be doing this little uh, black articulated bait fish that I really enjoy for stripers or bass or pike. Um, a really great nighttime pattern um, that I really enjoy. So, all right, so to start, I take a little bit of the fuzzy stuff. Um, these are two uh, hackle feathers um, from, oh, hairline dubbing. And what I'm going to do is take some of the fuzzy stuff, wrap it on here, because it's going to act as an anchor point. And then I'm going to put two on the left, and then I'm going to put two on the right. I want them to be vertical, so I'm going to strip kind of the fibers from two on this side, where I want them to catch. Lay them on, and catch them in. Make sure they're nice and straight nice and even there we go if they flare out this way or across you know just take your time and adjust them right trim the ends when you're ready and secure them in and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side all right so I've got my four feathers there locked in nice and vertical um, next what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of work back towards the tail and we're gonna come with some black deer tail and we're gonna take this from the tip because we don't want it to splay out. We want it to uh, lay nice and flat. And you want this to go about halfway down the feather. So what I do is I just kind of hold my tips up, say okay, right there is about halfway. I'm not doing a reverse tie or anything fancy for this one, just a simple Lay it down, spin it, make sure you got a nice, uh, you got a nice 360 degree profile. It's is just splaying up right now because of my vise. Trim the, uh, trim the tips and then we are moving on to our next step. All right, so here's what we have. Just a tail that we're gonna make a dubbing loop. So what you do if you don't know is you loop the line around your finger back on you'll make this nice loop here you can see it and what you're gonna do is just start tying backwards and then you're gonna wrap your thread around it while still holding this loop open once twice and then just secure it this is a 20 millimeter shank by the way I don't know if I said that already but if I did I apologize but it's a 20 millimeter shank here's a dubbing loop tool to spin our materials and this dubbing loop is a mixture, which I have already pre-prepared, of three materials. There's some purple strands, some you know holographic purpley pinkish uh, flashaboo, and then there is ice wing fiber black in there. And what I'm gonna do is put in my dubbing loop and just kind of spread it out. And I have cut it in half twice. So I halved it once and I halved it again. This gives me the appropriate length of fibers that I'm looking for. Some might still be a little long because they're, they're different length uh, fibers in, from one another. Once you have it, so you see I have it there, it's, I'm gonna spread it out a little bit so they don't get too clumped together. These do tend to clump together if they're not spread out. And that looks pretty decent. All right, so I'll just start spinning it up slowly. If you do it really, really quick, then the fibers will get all tangled. And so you don't wanna do that. So I do it really, really slowly. And then once I'm sort of happy with the positioning of the fibers and such, then I will give it a good spin and really wind it up. Make sure those fibers get nice and caught. So there you go, it's just a very sparse, um, a very sparse dubbing loop. But once you're good, start wrapping it and I sort of mend my materials backwards so that they fall towards the back. Very nice. And we're gonna go right to the tippy tippy eye as much as we can, as far as we can. We're gonna go right to that eye. Perfect. 
once you're happy, like I might even, like I'm gonna wrap it over itself a few times here. Then I will catch that. Don't worry about the loose fibers. I'll catch it twice and then I'll start working back, pulling all my fibers back. And I'll sort of catch them. You see I've caught the fibers themselves there. Trim that dubbing loop now that it's nice and, nice and caught. And you see what we have is this sort of just flashy collar around the fly. And that's really what we're looking for. If you have any of these, like these are too long up here, so I'm just gonna come in, trim them down a little bit. And that is great. So, I'm very happy with this, this flashy collar that we now have. So I'm gonna whip finish, because this is the back part of our articulated fly. And for added security, I'm gonna drop a little dab of super glue. All right, so our next step is to put in our lead hook. This is 30 pound uh, Tess Super Strand. It's a bendable wire. I really like it to connect my, my flies. And so I'm gonna tie it in on top. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this front tag end and I'm gonna pull it back to the side closest to me. And I'm gonna secure that in. The reason that I fold it over itself, and then here I have some uh, wire clippers and I'm just gonna clip it, that little excess that I don't need. Um, the reason I double it back is for the extra strength. It's for that extra strength. So here's the piece that we were working on earlier. Make sure that it's right side up. And what I'm gonna do is come in, loop the wire through it, and I'm gonna make a teeny, teeny, tiny loop. You don't want it to be, you'll see in a second, you don't want it to be any more than an eye length. So I'll show you there. All right, so you see this little loop that I've made. We want it to be nice and vertical, right on top of the hook. Oops, right on top of the hook. And it just should have enough space to wiggle. And that's it. And that's all this loop does. Um, I like to make them really small. You can make them longer, so this, this is back here more, but I like to make them um, nice and tight and short. It sort of reduces fouling. So I'll show you real close up too. I'm gonna take that wire, bend it back away from me now. The first time we bent it close to ourselves. And you see I'm just catching it in again, coming with some wire snippers. Snip that off. And there we are. Now, I always put super glue on this a liberal amount and one when I'm wrapping it up this way it will just add some extra security because it's never fun when you lose your back half here all right this is dried a little bit now and so I'm gonna lay a second pretty close like right about there I'm gonna lay a second clump of deer hair that doesn't reach completely all the way back to the tips of our in initial deer hair clump. So just, just a touch shorter, not by much, just a touch. And again, I'm gonna just do a regular tie-in. No hollow, no nothing, just a regular tie-in. Trying to get that 360 degree um, covering with the deer hair. All right, now I'm just going to trim the tips here. Um, okay, so once we're happy with that, you can see the formation starting to start, this sort of bait fish profile. You're going to make another dubbing loop and you're gonna do the same thing. Um, you're gonna use the same materials, some purpley strand, it doesn't really matter. I have, I actually use midge. Um, I use midge flash for mine, which is a little thinner because the thinner, the thinner it is, the easier, um, oops. The thinner it is, the easier it is to spin. When they're really bulky materials, they're hard to spin. And so I try to go for thin materials. All three of these are quite thin and not very bulky. I did the same thing. I halved it and halved it again. So here's what we came out with, something, you know, purpley, black, flashy, nothing like overwhelming, but just enough, you know, just enough. I probably did not space that out enough. Yeah, whatever. So same thing, you're gonna put it in, go slow, make sure that things aren't clumping together, kind of angle things so that they're parallel. And then once you're happy, you can go ahead and give it 
a good spin, however you're spinning your loops. Here's mine. You see, it's just kind of crazy, nice. See that, that's just nice, simple. All right, and then we're not gonna go all the way to the eye. We're not gonna go all the way to the eye. We're gonna leave some space. Maybe an eye or two. I mean, it depends how comfortable you are. Oops. Um, depends how comfortable you are with your skills and how much space you need. Doesn't really matter how much you leave. I like to leave at least an eye, at least. Um, I'm just brushing this out a little bit just because I have some trapped fibers in there that I don't particularly like. And uh, there we go. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing where I kind of trap it down. Oops, sorry. See that? That's a nice profile. I want it to stay kind of on this profile line. I don't want it to be too, too bulky up there. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our deer hair. And this clump doesn't need to be very big, but it should come from the base. It should come from closer to the base. Um, but it doesn't need to be a very large clump of deer hair. It can be just a pencil, kind of like a pencil width. And again, this is going to go, the tips should match up with the previous tips. They should be roughly about the same, just a touch shorter. Just a touch. And again, 360 degree covering. It's tough to work around that eye sometime, but do your best. Take your time. There's no, no rush. That looks great. Okay, and then we're going to come in really tight. You want to come in really tight. This is why I say don't, don't use a lot of deer hair on your final one. You want to use a significant amount less because you're going to come in so tight to the eye. And you might be thinking, well, isn't the eye going to be all messed up? And it's okay. Our mistakes are all going to be covered up. Um, you can use some sort of um, heat, like a lighter, to burn the tips off if you want. But you see, that's nice and neat. No need for a lighter there. Okay, so now the final step before we put the eyes on is this is a black... SF blend and this like makes the whole pattern like right now you're just like oh yeah I guess it looks okay whatever but this this makes the whole pattern okay so you just you're not gonna grab a lot but you're gonna grab probably right around that much not nothing crazy um, and you're gonna lay the strands down so that they extend all the way to the tail all right right on top, just like you would peacock almost. And use your thumb to spread that out on top to make like kind of a veil. And then I go as far forward as I can, pull this back over, same thing with your thumb, push down right in the middle to make a veil. And then just secure. This veil makes this pattern. It makes it. And if your veil is too long, you can just come in, like this one's just an inch too long. You want it to end right about where the tail fibers end. Right? See that veil? It just makes this perfect connection all the way to the tail. It really brings everything together. Um, okay, so this is done. You can whip finish. And then I'm going to put some eyes on right out front here. Just to show what I do for the eyes, um, I usually use Raid Zap, but I have run out. This is Solar as Flex, and I super glue these eyes on, and then just barely, like just enough so that they stay where they need to stay. And then I'll come in put some Put some solarize on just enough to sort of 
keep them in place and then I look straight on to make sure that the eyes are where they need to be and this looks pretty good and then I hit it with some UV boom just for like a quick five ten seconds flip it over do it on the other side and so there you have it this beautiful bait fish black I love black it's such a great color I mean look at that silhouette these are great they're very durable they're so durable that's why I really like them is you can catch a lot of pike or bass on these and they they hang around they don't really deteriorate they're really really durable so great pattern hope you guys enjoyed this if you haven't check out our podcast uh in the film search you know pretty much anywhere even on amazon now anywhere you get your podcasts um we're growing in listeners and that is super awesome and we really appreciate that so if you haven't checked it out please check out our our new podcast in the film where we discuss sort of relevant fly uh, fishing topics and uh, try to put our unique spin on it. Um, so thanks for watching. If 